Hello, and welcome to the November 15th Indie Plus exhibition game for 13th Age. Look at this book, it's so pretty. Um, yes, we are here to play this game with Ash Law, who is kindly offered to run it for us. Uh, Ash, why don't you introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about yourself. So I'm, I'm Ash Law, I'm the uh, organized play director for 13th Age. I've been playing 13th Age since before uh, about a year and a half before it was released. Uh, so wow. if I get any rules wrong, it's because I'm remembering like a playtest document from like ten iterations ago. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say that if you get any rules wrong, you have to like pay into a pot or something, and one of us will win the pot at the end of the game. But um, that's, awesome. that's Thank that's you very much. Really, what, I've got some. I've got some Halloween candy here. I'll put it in the pot <laughs> every time I get a little wrong, and then we can all share the Halloween candy. That's how the internet yeah. works, right? That's how it works. Yes, that's how it works. Just pass it to the screen. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> Catherine, why don't you introduce yourself? Okay. I'm Catherine. I apologize if there's any feedback from my mic. I appear to be having computer problems, but I play a lot of indie games. I've played with Mark and Brendan before. Have mostly play indie games. I haven't done anything D20 for about five years, so this should be a fun blast from the past type thing. A refreshing cool breeze. <laughs> awesome. Mark? Uh, hi, I'm Mark Diaz Truman. Uh, I'm uh, one of the co-owners of Magpie Games, so I develop a lot of indie games. I will occasionally uh, stumble into a D&D game. I think the last time was uh, when I was in Cambridge. My buddy was running a like first edition or zero edition game, and I said that was the first time I had unironically rolled a d20 in a decade. Uh, so I'm I'm looking forward to, to trying this out today. <laughs> no, no hipster, no hipsters. Um, and Rich. Hey, I'm Rich. Uh, I cut my teeth in RPGs way back in the day, uh, around the time when Unearthed Arcana first came out. First thing I ever played was the D&D Basic set, the Red Box. Uh, and, and I have played third and fourth. I played a campaign in third until I realized it took me like, I don't know, 45 minutes to make a character, and I got really tired after that. It's like, I don't know. And fourth, I, I played the introduction module, and that was great until I realized I already own a bunch of board games. So I kind of walked away from that. So I'm excited to see what 13th Age has. I've been play playing that for five, three minutes now. We're not even playing yet. Did I just blow your mind? I looked at my character sheet. I printed out a character sheet. I guess that's fair. That's kind of like playing. <laughs> um, I'm Brendan Conway. I do a bunch of stuff with Indie Plus. I work for Magpie. Uh, Mark is my boss, owner, um, and uh, yeah, I am super excited about this because um, it seems like a really solid addition of those mechanics that I enjoyed when I was a kid and didn't actually understand them and then got disappointed with when I got old enough to actually understand the rules. Uh, so, the, I mean, I was not disappointed with these. <laughs> uh, also, I bought the book, and so this is a great way for me to justify that. Um, us playing right now and right here. So th that's really what this is all about. So this is uh, an Indie Plus game, so this is going to be in accordance with the Indie Plus community standards. You can find out more about those on IndiePlus.org. Um, in general, for this game, our rating is approximately PG-13, where we will give you a warning that there might be foul language, largely because I'm here and I find it difficult to rein that in. <laughs> and, and there's likely to be uh, fantasy violence. But other than that, it should be relatively tame. So, uh, with that said, take it away, Ash. Okay, so you all hopefully got the PDF with the pre-generated characters in it. Uh, now, I know that Mark's really interested in playing the Wood Elf Ranger, and Richard's really interested in playing the Half-Orc Barbarian. So, uh, Catherine, what would you like to play? I think uh, I'd like to play the... The Halfling Rogue, if everyone else is... I mean, if Brendan's okay with that, since everyone else picked theirs. Halfling Rogue sounds cool. Yeah, absolutely. Go for it. Okay, okay. so we have... What would you like to play? Well, I don't want to bite off more than I can chew, but we have a Barbarian, a Ranger, and a Rogue, so it seems like the appropriate thing to fill that in would be a Spellcaster of some sort. Um, oh God. 
presumably either a cleric or a wizard. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> what do I want to be? Do I want to be the high elf wizard, the dark elf sorcerer, or the dwarf cleric? I'll, I'll go for the dwarf cleric. I'll go for the dwarf cleric. Let's do that. Okay, cool. Okay, and because there's probably what with it being a, a D20 kind of rolling game, I'm just going to set you up with some counters. So, there we go, and I'll try and grab. There we are. So, I'm using. Uh, Microsoft Excel for this. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. I really hope every single character looks like me. <laughs> they're, just all, they're just all Brendan with different names. Okay, and we'll we'll do marks now. Okay. And we'll fill that with arc space. And finally, Richard. Okay. Okay, and fill. There we go. Hot book. <laughs> <laughs> Good times. Okay. Fantastic. Okay, awesome. So, uh, the first thing to do. Um, whenever I switch back and forth, you'll see that little thing until it re-picks up my camera, is uh, each of your characters has at the top of the character sheet something called a one unique thing. And this is something which makes your character unique from every other character. I mean, yes, you might be a, uh, a half orc barbarian, but what is it that makes you, as a half orc barbarian, distinct from all other half orc barbarians? So you could say, well... I'm the only half orc barbarian who has swum the Midland Sea and has uh, or I'm the only I'm the only half orc who has escaped from hell. So come up with, with one unique thing. Don't worry if it's a little bit wacky or over the top, that's good. Turn it up to eleven. So does anybody have an idea off the top of their head of uh, their one unique thing? Yeah, okay. So, I apologize for cutting in. I just, I, I want to make sure this isn't too terrible, but I feel like this is one of those ideas that got in my head. I forget what, what book did this, but I want to be the only dwarven cleric who doesn't actually believe in the gods. Oh, that's interesting. Atheist cleric. So, so where does he believe that his powers come from? <laughs> that's a really good question. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think I think he believes that fundamentally there's like some sort of force that you can tap into through force of will or meditation that that uh, is different from whatever wizard magic that shit is. Uh, and people just call it gods because people are weird. People are silly. Um, that's not what I call it. Okay. Okay, that's that's pretty cool. So you're kind of almost like a like a Jedi, maybe. You're just like, yeah, I use the universal force, but other people give it names, but... Okay, I like yeah, that. I like it. Okay, does anybody else have a have an idea for their one unique thing? Um, I was going to say I'm the only person who's ever broken into the inner sanctum of the Risen Light, or replace that with your favorite cult or arcane group name. Oh, okay. 
Uh, so tell me about the Risen Light. They, they're a group of arcanists who believe there's some sort of higher power and they're working together to bring a new dawn upon the world with magic or something. I, I didn't pay a whole lot of attention, but there were really valuable things in there. So. Okay. Did you steal any of those things? Uh, yes. Well, tell, tell me, so, so what, what did you steal from the inner sanctum of uh, Risen Light? I stole one of their ritual objects, which was a large sun-shaped um, carafe. And no one will buy it from me, so I still kind of am stuck with it. Okay. Okay, so you have this large sun-shaped carafe that you, you stole from the inner sanctum of the Cult of Risen Light. Okay, I like that. Okay, Mark. All right, so I'm I'm really fascinated with the concept of these icons. So is it cool if my one one true thing uses an icon? Yes, yes, it is. Yeah. Cool, cool. So uh, I think I'm the the only elf to wield the bow of the High Druid. Ooh. Do you, do you still have that bow? Or yeah, of course. Is this yeah. like a one-time thing? Or? No, it was like it was like a gift a gift to me or gift slash curse. Uh, to me, like uh, for for a deed once done for the High Druid. <laughs> oh, I like that. Okay, okay, that's brilliant. And I, I think of it as like it's a it's a it looks like a normal bow, but then like when you when you put like you knock an arrow in it, like it it like almost like transforms into like this like fearsome thing, uh, and it's extraordinarily powerful. Okay, I I like it. World's bow of Hydroid. Okay, Richard. Uh, I think I got drunk one night and swapped eyes with a crone. Uh, so my left eye is not mine originally from birth. Yes. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> okay, so uh, character names. Uh, so, Richard, you're Puck the Pugnacious. Indeed, I am. Okay. Okay, Mark. Uh, hold on. Oh, let me get it. Let me get some elf names. I'm bad at elf names. I got the I got the names story game names project. I'm sure there's an entire thing of elf names. I'll look in the um, silly. Section. Yeah, he deserves one of the owl bear names. Elvish, page eleven. Roll me a. Uh, Roll me a d20. <laughs> you male or female character? Uh, I'm going to be male. All right. Go for it. I got three. Uh, you are Baratheon. Yeah. Is, no, is eager. Yeah, great. Cool. How do you spell that? B-A-R-A-T-H-I-O-N. Yeah, I'm down. I think it's pronounced Baratheon. Brothian. Well, the, the I think that's it's, it's not that's a phonetic thing. thing. I'm just yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, Catherine. Uh, I was gonna go with Hannah Brandlebright, I guess. Hannah Brandlebright. She's her own. She's her own toy line. That's awesome. And Brendan. Yeah, I'm I'm called Heretic. Heretic. Mm-hmm. Oh, was is that your birth name? Was that a prophetic birth name, or is it a name that you've chosen for yourself, or a name that others have applied to you? It's the name they started calling me, and then I took it and adopted it proudly. Okay. Awesome. Uh, the next thing on your character sheets, you will see a space which says Icon Relationships. So I'm going to run through the icons really quick. So, okay, uh, the Archmage. He's the most powerful wizard to ever live, and he's the latest in a long line of Archmages. He, he preserves the Dragon Empire. He, his wards hold monsters at bay but his wards are slowly fading. The Crusader. Uh, the Crusader is an evil man on the side of... 
No, actually, he's just an evil man. Uh, he's uh, he's all about conquest. He goes from hellhole to hellhole, enslaving them, adding demons to his armies. Uh, but sooner or later, he's going to run out of hellholes to enslave, and then he's going to have a big army full of demons. Uh, but currently, he's 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 doing a good thing because he's enslaving demons. So he's kind of kind of this accepted guy. Uh, the Diabolist. Uh, the Diabolist is uh, unafraid of of doing uh, of doing business with demons. She she controls fiends. She tampers with the fabric of reality. Uh, the Dwarf King. Uh, the dwarfiest dwarf to ever dwarf a dwarf. He's great. Needs the dwarves. It's all about the dwarves. Uh, the Elf Queen. Uh, the queen of the Court of Stars. And she uh, leads the three nations of elves. So the High Elves, the Dark Elves, and the Wood Elves. The Dragon Emperor. The Emperor who is the latest in a long line of emperors. Might be the last in a long line of emperors. As yet his rule is untested. The Great Gold Worm. The Great Gold Worm is... Uh, Force for good in the world. He sends his paladins out to do, to do good. Uh, unfortunately, his paladins and him are kind of tied up with preventing demons coming out of this huge abyss that's opened up. The High Druid. So the High Druid, though this game doesn't have alignments, if this game did have alignments, we might say that she was truly neutral. Uh, so the High Druid is a champion of the wild. She would just like all this civilization stuff to so please go away. The Lich King. The Lich King in a previous age was known as the Wizard King. And he was uh, he was he was the absolute ruler until he was cast down. He's returned in the current age as the Lich King. The the Orc Lord. Uh, so the person who, who destroyed the Wizard King was the Orc Lord, first of the Orcs, created by the Elves, and the problem with creating a living weapon is that afterwards you've still got a living weapon. So uh, he was the progenitor of the Orcs, and he has returned in the current age, uh, and has started uniting them, Genghis Khan style. The Priestess. The Priestess is... Uh, is a force for good in the world. She unites people, brings them together, and it's through her that many clerics claim they receive their power. There's the Prince of Shadows. The Prince of Shadows is is a rumor. He's a he's a mystery wrapped inside a cloak, that's picking your pocket. He doesn't even exist. He's he's one part Robin Hood, one part Kaiser Soze. And then the three. Three evil dragons who rule the imperial city of Drakenhall. So even though everybody's like, yeah, they're, they're evil, they're totally evil, they, they still rule an imperial city. And uh, it's just a matter of time before one of those three makes their move. So you have three points to spend on icon relationships. Uh, if you look right at the beginning of your PDF, like on page three, I think, uh, you'll see a quick recap. Page three, page... Uh, it's it's labeled as page two. It's page four of the PDF, but page two on the little pagiation thing in the corner, uh, which gives the, the icons a quick one, two-sentence thing. So you have three points to spend on relationships with these icons. They could be positive relationships, negative relationships, or conflicted relationships. So you could say, well, I've got a three-point positive relationship with the Archmage. Uh, the Archmage respects what I'm about, uh, you know, he knows he knows about me. Or it could be like the Crusader. The Crusader, I've got a three-point negative relationship with the Crusader. He burnt my village down. He doesn't even know who I am. But one day, I shall I shall bring him to justice. Or it could be like a conflicted relationship, like the Diabolist. She creeps me out. She's like this half-demon woman, lives out in the swamps, demon surrounds herself with demons. But she occasionally sends me gifts and stuff. And like helps me and it's really creepy. And I don't like it, but it's a conflict relationship. So you could spend all your points having 
having one really powerful relationship, or you could spread those around. You could have like a two point or one point or three one point relationships. So it sounded like okay. Does anybody have an idea of what they would like for their relationship? I have to have the two-point relationship with the Orc Lord because I've never had an opportunity to have any kind of relationship with an Orc Lord. <laughs> Is that a positive relationship with the Orc Lord or a negative? I, I, it has to be positive. I'm sorry. I, yeah, totally positive. <laughs> That's awesome. I love that guy. Positive. Okay, so two-point positive with the Orc Lord? Yeah. Okay. And you've got one more point there. Who else would you like a relationship with? I think I would like a conflicted relationship with the Elf Queen uh, because she's kind of hot. <laughs> kind of uh, hot. Okay, so so you like her, but maybe she doesn't like I did not maybe? say that I like the Elf Queen. <laughs> Out loud. You kind of do. So you're, you're kind of conflicted on your feelings, on your feelings with her. Okay. It's complicated. Uh, I had a Facebook. Complicated. D does she even know you exist, or is it just no. like you, you admire I've, her? I've seen pictures of her on chapels. Okay. Yeah. Seen pictures. Okay. Uh, who's who's next? Should we go with uh, Mark? Yeah, I'm good. So. Uh, I'm saying I have a negative one relationship with the Elf Queen. That she banished me from the Elf Lands for treason, so I was I was exiled from my from my people's homeland. Treason, unjustly. And I'm guessing the other one's going to be with the Hydroid. Yeah, so the Hydroid gave me her bow, Tanith, and uh, has as uh, I I, th I think I see it as more like the Hydroid is confusing and cryptic. I would imagine, right? Like she doesn't. She doesn't make a lot of sense, uh, so sometimes she'll give me tasks or things to do that become clear as I undertake them. Uh, otherwise, otherwise, she just seems like crazy and chaotic. Okay, awesome. Uh, let me see. Uh, Catherine? I was going to say a two-point conflicted relationship with the Prince of Shadows. Okay. That he's, well, he's super helpful, great guy to have in your corner, but no one knows what he's really up to. Okay. And a one point negative with the priestess. Ooh, why one point negative with the priestess? Because she gives a lot of people divine powers, but I don't think she um, checks them out well enough before she grants them her blessing. Ah. I love that. Hannah has issues with the priestess's vetting process. I love it. You do here, okay. but your HR process is just terrible. <laughs> and um, Brandon. Um, Brandon Robert, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking I have a two-point negative with the Crusader. Ooh, okay. And why is that? Why, why, why is, why do you have a negative relation with the Crusader? Well, because the Crusader is totally all about being a representative of the Dark Gods and, like, enacting their will. And I'm like, you're crazy, they don't exist, and you're hurting people for no good reason. Uh, uh, so I inherently stand against that sort of senselessness, is, is how I see it. I'm like, this is ridiculous, and you're kind of a monster. Uh, because you are justifying with nothing doing terrible things. Are you um, the only reasonable dwarf in existence? Basically... <laughs> That's my one unique thing. Um, and then I was thinking similarly, I, I might have... You know what actually makes more sense? I'd make it conflicted. I have a one-point conflicted relationship with the priestess. Uh, because I, I similarly, I'm like, she's the priestess, and therefore her entire shtick is being bad. Like, she serves things that don't exist, and she's leading people down a path that is not real and true. But she's, like, helping people. So I mean that's actually that's actually fairly decent. Um, so I don't know I don't quite know how I feel about that because she's simultaneously doing good work but also part of the problem. Okay. Okay, I like that. Okay, now the penultimate thing to do with these characters 
is to uh, pick backgrounds. So you have eight points to spend in backgrounds. Uh, to make things real quick, just pick two backgrounds and spend four points in each. So in other games similar to this, you might have skills that are like climb, use magic item, read magic books, something like that. Instead, you would have a background. Um, I once climbed the Archmage's blue tower and stole his spellbook. Four points. So anytime you need to climb or know something about the Archmage or do something involving spellbooks or, or sneak around somewhere, you would add that in. So if you can convince me as a player, oh no, I, I climbed into his tower and there were a load of traps there. I should get a bonus to disarming this trap. I'll go, yeah, that seems reasonable. Okay, yeah, add that four-point bonus in. So it's like a little one-sentence story about something that has happened to your character or the character has done in the past. So who has who has an idea for some backgrounds for their character? Uh, broken in, into the inner sanctum of the risen light. Okay, yeah, that's a cool background. Okay, so. Wait, that's your unique thing. Can you double up like that? Yeah, you can. Mm, okay. You're not it's shortchanging because, yourself. She's the only person who's done it, and also it it becomes applicable in her life if she wants to break in somewhere. Then yeah, or she wants to know about the sanctum of the hidden light. She brings that into play and. She's got a four-point background in it. And uh, what 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 do you fancy for your other background? Uh, second story, halfling. Second story, halfling. Okay, so you're 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 adept at breaking into houses. Through the second I mean. story, uh, you possibly travel with a rope and a grappling hook and a step ladder. And okay, okay, cool. Uh, your character, because your character is a uh, thief, or sorry, rogue, uh, you also get a free five point background thief as well. So it it sounds like your character's Pretty specialized in fever. Do you want to make that second uh, second one instead of second story halfling? She already got thief there. Your character gets back free. Do you want to make that, that something else that's unrelated to thievery? Like like what's your character's hobbies or what's the worst thing that ever happened to your character? I can't hear you because your mic's off. I'm sorry. <laughs> Devout. Devout. Devoted to one or more halfling-specific deities. Ah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Suck it, Brendan. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, nice. awesome. Awesome. And... So, uh, three, plus five. Okay, uh, Mark, you are playing the Wood Elf Ranger. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, let's let's talk about let's talk about uh, Brampion. Cool. So, I the first background I took is Hero of the Tenorous Arene Orc Wars. So, once the uh, after the Orc, uh, what is it? What is his name? The Orc, Orc Lord. Uh, after the Orc Lord made war upon upon the Elven lands, like that was how it was, and uh, I was one of the one of the heroes that drove back the Orcish forces and uh, and uh, saved the saved the Western kingdoms. Okay, awesome. Okay. And, and then what is, what is your other background? Yes. Uh, so I did you say I get one for being a ranger? Uh, I just checked your character sheet. That's not in your ranger build. Okay. Um, You've got some other cool stuff. Yeah. So I guess I guess it would be cool for me to have a different like social one, um, mm -hmm. but I I would still like to be a fairly effective ranger. So what would you recommend? Like, should I does being a hero of the orc horse cover that stuff? What What about if we say your character is a well-renowned ranger? 
So okay. if you go into a tavern, you can roll on that to see if people recognize you. But, you know, you you, you have renown as this, but you also, you know, you have renown for a reason because you're good at it. Okay, sure. I was thinking that okay. would be something like way social, like betrothed to the daughter of the elf, elf queen. So, like, I have this sort of, like, ties to elven society. Um Ooh. Is that is that cool? Because I I feel like for most of the roles I would make, I could use the hero stuff to do the to do ranch. Cool. Okay, That's is cool. that cool? Okay, so cool. I'm good. Well, high society. Yeah. yeah, totally. Okay. Maybe that's why she got I'll rid of it. Sorry, I, I cut you off there. Sorry. No, no, I was just saying maybe that's why the elf queen got rid of me. So there's some like intrigue there or something. Uh, it's political. Yeah. Okay. It could be your breath. Uh, Shut up. I, I, I think that Puck uh, was... His mom wasn't really impressed with the fact that he looked like a half-orc. Uh, so she sold him into slavery, and he rose through the ranks and became a, a famous gladiator. Uh, as a gladiator, he was he was kind of, you know, like... He was the one that, that didn't quite die, but everybody loved hating him. He learned how to play up the, the hate me tropes. What's the wrestling term for that, Brendan? I know you know. I believe it's a heel. heel. Mark, heel. Mark, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mark be, beats you to it in the text there. So he's a heel. He plays that well. But it's totally a show for him. Okay, and what is your, what is your other one? Well, he, he actually ended up earning a lot of money, and it wasn't like he could go anywhere, so he became quite interested in art and museums. Not that uh, anybody knows that. Oh, okay. Oh, that's awesome. Like a high-cultured gladiator. Uh, like a wrestler who goes home to his classical paintings. That's amazing. <laughs> I like that. That's pretty cool. Okay, and Brendan... Yeah, um, so I was thinking that I took um, Soul Defender of the Forlorn Villages during the Crusader's Purge, um, basically envisioning that there were there are these villages, they called, they're called the Forlorn Villages, and it's because they sort of get screwed. They're just, just far enough away from any centers of civilization that when bad shit comes their way, the main forces are pulled back to the important places, and the Forlorn Villages basically get abandoned uh, consistently. Okay. There might be four forlorn villages, but I feel like that would also be a crime punishable by death, if that were true. There that used to be five. five. It, would be, it would be a pun punishable by death. Um, so, yeah, I, I, the Crusader was bringing a, pur like a purge, which I'm envisioning is essentially like a crusade. She was, or is the Crusader here? She actually. Uh, yeah. He. Okay. Well, so the Crusader for this game to be a sheep, that's cool too. I'm good either way. Um, the Crusader was bringing uh, an army in and doing doing this purge. It was supposed to be like a holy, we're going to kill everybody who's not worshipping the dark gods, and if you convert, then you're good. Uh, and I was the only person who remained in the area around to defend the uh, forlorn villages. That doesn't necessarily mean that they all made it through intact. It just means that I tried. Um... And my other background is I was trained as an official law priest by the Carnadine Order. Um, yeah, I, I'm pretty much envisioning that the Carnadine Order is a group of dwarven priest guys who... I mean, I was a law priest. Our job is to essentially be lawyers, who are also priests, who venerate the law as if it was a deity. And they actually have a, a deity that is the law. And I was at a certain point, I was like, "This is not helping anyone." Uh, and that's where that's where I started down my dark path. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Uh, the last thing to do is to roll for icon relationships. So, uh, if you have a two-point relationship, roll two d six. Let me know any. Fives or sixes that come up. And if you have one point, roll 1d6. Let me know if fives or sixes can come up. Yes, I have a okay, five so. on my elf queen. Five on your elf queen? 
I got a I got I got a five on my Crusader. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll my uh, Crusader. Uh, I got okay. my I got a two on my Prince of Shadows. Okay, so I, I just want to know any fives or sixes that come up. So did you get any for your uh, for your priestess? Nope. No. Okay. Mark got a five with the Elf Queen and Richard. I rolled uh, all twos. All twos. Okay, so. That's interesting. Right. And the Crusader there is. Okay. So. We have in the party Heretic, the atheist cleric, uh, who believes the gods are fake, uh, defended the forlorn villages, and is a former member of the Carnadine Order. Uh, we have uh, Hannah Brandlebright, who uh, stole uh, a uh, sun carafe from the Risen Light. Risen Light? Okay. And uh, is highly devoted to the deities of the halflings. Okay. Uh, we have Mark. Uh, Mark is playing Graphian the Eager. He's a hero of the Orc Wars, has ties to Elvish High Society, and wields Tanif. Bow of the High Druid. Uh, Mark, do you want to swap your five for having Tanif as a magic item? Uh, swap my five and what? Okay, so the way that icon relationships roll, rolls work is any oh, okay. six will get you a, a clear benefit in play. Uh, any five will get you a benefit but there might be a downside associated with it. So... Um, to give an example, if you were coming up to uh, some city gates and you want to be allowed in and you don't want to deal with, uh, with the guards on the gates, you could go, oh, I've, got a, I've got a six with the priestess. Can I use that? And I'll go, yeah, sure. You see that there's a, there's, a, there's a priest and he's got a wagon full of communal wine and he's a priest of the god of wine. So they'll, they'll totally let him in without checking his wagon. And you, you cool. know this guy. So... You can use that six pair. If it was a five, it would be like, yeah, you know this guy. You owe him money, and he's going to want something in return. So if you like, you can save up that five with uh, your negative relationship with the Elf Queen to use in play, or if you like, you could trade it in for a magic item right now to actually have Tanith as a magic item. Yeah, I think I'll do that for just for the simplicity of it. That sounds cool. Okay, cool. So Tanif is a magic item. Uh, if you have a pen and paper, I'm going to tell you what she does right now. So she gives you a plus one to attack, plus one to damage, and uh, once per battle, you may re-roll your Elven Grace. However, because you're trading a five for this, I'm going to say Tanif has a she has a she has a bit of a, a mind of her own. This magic item, so if you fail that Elven Grace reroll, she gets to make an attack, and it might be on anybody. She just likes you know murder and bouncing things out and fertilizing the ground with people's blood, uh, and there is a a quirk. To his items. So the way that magic items work in 13th Age is all of them have a, a quirk associated with them. So uh, to give an example from popular culture, Lord of the Rings. Okay, so the one ring, magic item, you know, turns you turns you invisible. You, you put the ring on and, and then whoop, disappear. So that's what the magic item is. But the magic item has a quirk, and the quirk is, but it wants to get back to Mordor to get back to its master. Now you get 
Uh, these quirks are like minor personality quirks, which uh, affect your character, and they it's it's a it's a minor thing which you can easily overcome. If you get more magic items, but you have levels, and all of these pre-generated characters are level two, if you have more magic items, but you have levels. You're no longer a person with a load of magic items. You're a load of magic items with a person attached. So they, they go from minor personality quirks to overriding things. But currently you have this one magic item, so you have Tanif. And Tanif's quirk is that... Uh, let me see. Uh, Tanif's quirk is you have an urge towards apotheosis. She, she believes that she's like a god of bones, a god amongst bones. And she's she's always like keen to show off her her abilities, which for you is like a, a minor quirk. But you're like, yeah, it'll be cool if one day I you know became godlike in power. Uh, whereas if you over attune to items, you might start going around telling people that you're a god, which might not work out so well. Okay, so. Uh, Let's start. Okay, so, Catherine, Hannah Brindlebright is, is at her, her home in the halfling town of Twisp uh, when a, a priest, a halfling priest, runs in, a halfling priest of your acquaintance, uh, uh, Gilly, Gunny, uh, Gilly Gunny Fudgebottom. Runs in, and Father Fudgebottom runs up to you, and he's he's all in a he's all in a tiver, and he's like, ah ah, uh, the the uh, the statues in in a sanctuary, they they've all exploded, uh, their uh, the power of the gods has has left me, and uh, all throughout uh, the town of Twisp, uh, this this is going on, and, and the the gods have have left Twisp, or at least something has caused all the priests and clerics to believe. But the gods have left Twisp. Uh, so I'm going to say that your characters, but these are getting into things, know each other. So, uh, Catherine, uh, which uh, which character do you have the closest relationship to? Uh, heretic. Okay, heretic. And and what is your relationship with heretic? We're debating partners sometimes, kind of. Okay, so you kind of get into it sometimes down the tavern. He's like, gods totally don't exist. He's like, gods, you feel like gods do exist. Oh, well, our, our gods <laughs> exist. I don't know about the rest of <laughs> <laughs> Your gods might not, but you know, ours do, so shut up. Okay, uh, Brendan, who, who does your character have a relationship with apart from Hannah Brindlebright? Um... That is a good question between Puck and Bratian. Sorry, Bratian. Um, I'm thinking maybe it's... I don't know. Puck? I think Puck. Puck. Okay. Puck the Pugnacious. What is your relationship with Puck the Pugnacious? Um... I think that uh, I have maybe worked with Puck. Maybe that doesn't work. I don't know. What do you think, Rich? I'm trying to come up with something because I kind of like that, but I'm having a hard time coming up with a, a good, clear... Because you're primarily like a gladiator, right? Like That's primarily what you do. You're a gladiator. I, I think maybe I threw a match for you. Maybe we split some money. Oh. Yeah, for that. I'm good with that. It's never going to come back on me. It happened a long time ago. <laughs> no, I like that, because I'm fairly practical, so I like that. I needed. I was running out of money. It was after one of my long sojourns where I ran around preaching non-belief. And I, I, gospel. Like, I like you yeah. to work more than I am. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, like and it. Richard, Pug the Pugnacious has a relationship with Brathian the Eager, hero of the Orc Wars. How did you meet this hero of the Orc Wars? What's, what's your relationship with him? I, I think the Baratheon killed my dad. And that's how you became friends? Yeah, I hunted him down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Brett Baratheon killed your dad, so that's that's how you know Baratheon. And uh, Mark, uh, who does who does Baratheon have a have a relationship with here? Apart from uh, apart from of course Puck. Uh, I think I'll I'll have a relationship with Hannah, kind of square the circle there, um, and uh, I think uh, Hannah is uh, I knew Hannah's father because he was he he was around for the the orc wars, and uh, after I was banished from the Elven kingdoms, I basically just like showed up at her place uninvited and was like, just- I'm gonna live here for a while now. <laughs> just left on our sofa for like a year. <laughs> it's like a week in elf time. It's like a week in elf time. <laughs> yeah, okay. I was a very, I was kind of a terrible house guest by halflings. I like observed all the elven customs, but I was kind of a terrible guest by halfling standards. Okay, so this this terrible thing has happened, and the gods have left the town of Twisp, uh, which means that. Uh, but you know the crops are starting to fail, and uh, Brendan uh, obviously heretic thinks that it, it's not the gods leaving. You know it must be something else. Uh, now thankfully you you do as a party know of somebody who might be able to give you some answers. Uh, there's an old crone who lives in a spider wood, and this this old crone uh, has one orc eye. Uh, she came. She came to twist one day, and she got drunk, and there was a bear, and everybody woke up the following morning, and now she has one or uh, But this this old crone lives lives on the coast, in this place called the Spiderwood, and the Spiderwood is is quite close to a hellhole and some ruins, and it's, it's on the coast of the Iron Sea. The the Iron Sea is um, is right at the edge of the Empire. It's this mostly impassable sea at the the a long, long time ago, many ages ago, the, the Archmage she cast all the monsters out of the Midland Sea. So they, they all left like the middle of the Empire. And, of course, they all end up in the Iron Sea. And the Iron Sea now actively hates the land. And it's constantly battering the shore. So, so the Spiderwood is, is kind of on the coast of the Iron Sea. So you know where this crone is. So we're, we're going to go, do this quick montage as we, as we travel to the Spiderwood from the town of Twist. So I'm going to go around the group and I'll say things like, uh, well, Richard, tell me about problem that the party encounters. Richard will go, oh, well, you know, we're going through elf lands and we get stopped by an elven patrol. And I'll go, okay. Well, thankfully, Braffian the Eager solved that problem. And then and Mark will say how Braffian solved the problem. And then I'll say, okay, Mark, tell me the next problem. So it's just like a montage where there's no dice rolling. Uh, you just You just kind of relay the problems on your journey and how each character solve the problems. So we'll start with uh, with Brendan. Brendan, you are leaving the town of Twisp. You're heading uh, you're heading eastward uh, towards uh, the Queen's Wood, which is is Elven territory. Uh, on the way, there's the uh, uh, there's the halfling town of Burrow, which is a little bit more insular than Twisp. Not as many outsiders. Uh, but you could, if you like, choose to bypass that and head directly to the Queenswood. Tell me the first problem that you encounter on the road east. Yeah. Um, hmm. There was a um, a large monster in the shape of an eyeball with four limbs erupting from it. Um, that was roaming around in the area around that halfling village. Um, and I think we might have hunted it then, right? Like, we might have actually taken it upon ourselves to hunt it, but also it might have just found us on the way. We heard about okay. it near the halfling village. So there's, there's an eyeball monster. Thankfully, you are with Hannah Brandlebright, who managed to solve the problem with the eyeball monster. How did Hannah Brandlebright solve the problem with the eyeball monster? Well, in the town, we'd known about it. had been making forays towards, towards us, so we'd c- kind of set up a defensive parameter, just dug some trenches, some nets, things like that, and then you'd lay the land well enough to kind of lead it towards those. Okay. So this, this monster, you, you actually lead it into, into a trap. It falls into the trap. Your net whisps, whisks it up into the trees, and you poke it with sticks till it dies or something similar. Thus leaving you able to pass onwards towards the Queen's Wood. 
But what, what is the next problem that you encounter as you move into Elven territory? Sorry, my mic was off. But as we move further into Elven territory, just uh, kind of the forest starts to encroach upon the road. Everything's more wild and less civilized. And uh, eventually it seems as though the tree and plants, trees and plants themselves are reaching out at us and attacking us and blocking our way. Thankfully, you're with Raffian the Eager, uh, who is a wood elf. Uh, tell, tell us, Mark, how Raffian the Eager solved the problem of the forest itself preventing you from progressing forwards. All right, so, uh, so Brathian uh, knows the, the language of the trees that's taught only to elven royalty, and the group is in such danger that I, I go ahead and I use this language to, to order the trees to, to go back, uh, which of course brings, brings great shame to me because I've had to expose that. such so I've said words that have never been said before orcs before. <laughs> okay. So I wasn't really paying much attention, so it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. It's cool. Well, I trust Puck too, I and mean, we've been through we've been through some stuff. That's true. And you yeah. killed my dad. So Raffian yeah. speaks the language of the trees, but the, the whispering of the wind through the through the through the leaves is about the secret language which only Elven nobility knows, and he speaks this on the, the woodland parts before you, and you you smell the fresh loam as the, as the trees uproot themselves and actually to leave the path. However, that's not the, that's not the problem uh, that, that you encounter next. As, as you're making your way through the through the Queen's Woods, you pass by a couple of Elven settlements. There's the mighty grandfather, sorry, the mighty Goldleaf River, which runs through uh, the Queen's Wood. What is the next problem that the party encounters, Mark? Um, I think we are uh, we we camp for the night at one point, and uh, something in our food makes us sort of drugged and sleepy as if the something was, was stalking us and it had poisoned us or somehow uh, distracted us with magic. Thankfully, you're with Puck the Pugnacious. How did Puck the Pugnacious solve the problem of the drowsy making food? I, I've been drinking poison for years, so I just picked everyone else up and carried them away. Puck the Pugnacious... <laughs> Carries the party away. It turns out that some uh, that some uh, woodland sprite had poisoned your food, uh, drugged you with the intention of, of springing upon the party later. And you, 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 as you carry the party away, drag them away from the clearing. You can see the woodland sprite sprites shaking their tiny fists at you. Uh, but what is what is the final part problem? You you exit the Queen's Wood. Uh, there's this huge coral behemoth trail, and then on the other side of it. Many miles away, you can see the spider wood. What is the final problem that you encounter as, as you, you cross the Coral Behemoth Trail and start to enter the spider wood? Hmm. I think that we come upon a great uh, uh, panic uh, in that there is uh, there are a few satyrs that are attempting to lure some of the villagers' daughters away. And unfortunately... Uh, are caught up in the music of the, the flutes and dance. Ah. Okay, the saviors are attempting to lure people off the path. Uh, they're attempting to lure villagers away. Thankfully, thankfully, you're with Heretic. And Heretic totally knows about how to deal with this. Probably from his time with the Caradine Order. Tell me, yeah. tell me, Brent, how does, how did, how, tell me, Brent, how did, how did Heretic solve the problem? We don't like fun, so we don't believe in any fun. So, um, I think, I think, yeah, the Carnadine Order. We are all about like, or since they were about law and whatnot, they're about like rationality and trying to prevent any sort of illegal affectings of the mind. So they taught principles about how to counter that magic. So all I had to do was sing the counter tune that completely disrupted their melodies. The satyrs were playing, and it undid the enchantment. And then the villagers proceeded to assemble rocks and start throwing them. <laughs> okay, that's cool. So you you lead everybody away, and they then they then start throwing rocks at the satyrs. And okay, okay, that sounds pretty cool. Uh, so you are now in the uh, now in the spider woods. At the, at the very edge of the empire, uh, 
And let me see here. Okay, and you know of this crone who lives in uh, in this this far off hut, like at the edge of the of the spider wood where it overlooks the iron sea, and you make your way towards the crone's home. Let's get this kind of ramshackle run down old uh, many broken roof line covered in moss shack and uh, and I believe but it's uh, let me see uh, Pug the pugnacious who knows her and as as you approach you see her you see her exit uh, the hut as though she had perhaps had full knowledge of your coming and she approaches the party who bent over and withered Hello! Hello, it is my friend Puck the Pugnacious! Ah! Welcome to my domain! She says, cackling. It's really clean up a little bit. This isn't, this isn't what I expected, Mabel. What do you mean, clean up? I've removed all the dead bodies I have hanging from trees. Oh well. You you look around. You see that there's like, there's, there's, all this rope has been kind of cut off, and it looks like you know maybe she's she's taken down some some bodies which were hanging up there. And you you realize that maybe maybe Mabel isn't isn't maybe isn't she isn't a nice old lady, and maybe she's like in league with with forces of darkness. Uh, but she she does owe you. So you're so you're able to call upon that now. Well, Mabel, uh, my friends and I are here because uh, someone let the gods out, or something along. What I, heretic? What's the problem again? Sim simplistically put, the problem is that people who think in things that don't exist think that the things that don't exist went away. The things which don't exist went away. The people who believe in the things which don't exist, but the thing... You, you speak in riddles. Answer me this. What is... What is... Five plus a dark sense of humor? And she looks at you. She, she looks at you kind of kind of weird, like she, she doesn't even... Like she, she's posed you a riddle, but she's rubbish at riddles. It's um, a pretty little song. Uh, make me a... Uh, Okay, make me make me a skill roll. So this is going to be your uh, wisdom modifier. Sure. Uh, plus your level. Plus uh, undying order, I guess. Sure. Your wisdom modifier is plus four. Your level is two. Uh, your former member of the Cardine order is plus four. So a total of plus ten. So d20 right. plus ten. D20 plus ten. Got it. Fourteen! That is not very high for what I could have done. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, with 13th age, uh, you can either choose to fail a roll, or you can choose to fail forwards, which means that you get what you want, but there's some sort of downside that results from it. For example, if you were climbing a wall, then maybe Heretic would have successfully climbed up the wall, but would have loosed some stones which fall upon the head of Raffi and Eager, or something similar to that. So, would you like to? Would you like to just fail and just like insult her? Or do you want to? Do you want to fail forwards and kind of bamboozle her? But but there's some sort of downside that's going to come from that. Let's fail forwards. Okay. So she she listens to your strange answer, and as she herself is is rubbish at riddles, and you you gave this answer with. With such such a plum and flash, like of course that's the answer. Of course it is. Then then she's like, and she's all, uh, yes yes, sir, that is the answer to my to my riddle. What is five plus a dark sense of humour? Mm -hmm. Yes, that is a good answer. Very well. I shall I shall help you with your problem of the missing things which do not exist. If you could tell me a bit more about this missing things which do not exist, because I have no idea what you're talking about, my dear. And Mabel, Mabel then kind of 
looks at a party like missing things which don't exist? What's what's all this then? Yeah, I think I'm about to explain and somebody should totally cut me the hell off. Yeah, I'm gonna say Yeah. <laughs> I, I, just oh. before he says something, I'm just going to put my hand over his mouth and, and look at the hobbit. <laughs> the cats okay. have abandoned us. And that's that's exactly ah. how it happens. Yeah. Ah, the gods! Yes, I I have heard of this. I The crows on, on the evening wind, they brought me news of the gods' disappearance. Yes. They have gone to witness the birth of a new god. There they is have no gone such thing. To place. What's wrong with that? <laughs> there is no such thing. What are you talking about? <laughs> Please, uh, if you uh, if you do a small job for me. I will tell you where this far off place is. I'm not cleaning out any stalls, Mabel. Whatever other labor you have for me, we can work it out. Do we have time for no, such no, plays, not Hannah? It's, it's not cleaning out stalls or anything of that like. I wish you to transport some eggs for me. Uh, just, just take them to where this new guy is due to be born, and leave them in the local vicinity. And I shall, uh, I shall, if you agree to this, I shall tell you where the guy is due to be born. Can I, uh, can I try to th like do? Do I have any sort of lore ability to know what what these eggs might be about? Oh, you have uh, ties to Elvish high society. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, sure. Uh, you're a wood elf. Hmm. Let me see. So this is going to be your wisdom modifier, which view is one, okay. plus your level, which is two, plus ties to elven society. So that's total plus seven. So d20 plus seven. 23. 23? Okay. Okay, yes, you totally know what these eggs are. Uh, she, she has gone into her hut and has, has fetched out a basket full of spider eggs. These, these, aren't, these aren't like tiny spider These are like spider eggs the size of, uh, of like basketballs. These are huge spider eggs. And she, she has fetched out this large basket of them. So these, these are spider eggs that she wishes you to take with you. Giant spider eggs. Those look delicious. Do I know do I know why she would want them to be near the uh, near the this birthplace of a new god? Huh. You uh, you might not know that, but Hannah Brandlebright might know that. She is devoted to the halfling deities. I so, would okay, uh, let yeah. me see. So, Hannah Brandlebright is trying to is trying to work this out. So, uh, we'll say that this is Hannah Brandlebright. So, your intelligence modifier, which is zero, okay, plus your level, which is two, plus your devoted half deities, which is plus four. So, a total of plus six. Uh, difficult here is fifty. Yay. Nineteen. Did that show okay. up? It is. Yes, it it is. Okay. It is. Oh, I see it. Yeah. It does. Um, okay. Yes. So, so Mabel, the old crone, uh, wishes you to take these these spider eggs. She's hoping that she can somehow influence the birth of this new god, so that it's like the birth of a spider god. Which. I don't know whether that's a good thing, but that's what she wants you to do, or at least agree to do, in exchange for her help. I say it's fine, because no harm can come from bringing eggs to something that's not really happening. Ugh. I agree with the dwarf for the first time in a while. <laughs> at some point we'll need breakfast. 
None of you are concerned about the eggs of spiders. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, Thank you for agreeing to do me this very, very small and inconsequential favor, which shall have no downside down the road at all. Uh, so, yes, I shall tell you when his God is due to be born. His God is due to be born in the village of Lorne. Now, a uh, heretic knows that the village of Lorne is, 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 is one of the four villages which you defended from the Crusader. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it's quite some ways away. It's quite some ways away. So you'll, you'll, have, to, you'll have to make your way uh, north across the, uh, across the Spiderwood uh, to, uh, to a place known as the Chulfen. At the edge of the Chulfen is the village of Lorne. Okay. So, yeah, I, it'll be a long journey to get there, but I have some some surviving friends there. Uh, we should have a decent reception to be able to get a warm meal and a soft bed and, I mean, deposit these eggs, spider eggs, if I were to believe you, Baratheon, um, to no harm, really. Okay. Okay, so you you proceed northwards from her house, leaving her behind. Just what 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 is what is your intention? What do you what does the party wish to do next? Well, as soon as we're out of earshot, I want to tell everyone that she wants us to bring the spider eggs there so that they can devour the essence of the new god and become a spider god, and that we probably should not actually do that. <laughs> we with the omelets. <laughs> that has the right idea. Yeah. Spider omelets. <laughs> Aren't you friends with that crone? Wouldn't she be upset if you completely betrayed her like that? I hadn't really considered it, but yeah, probably. I mean, she doesn't necessarily need to know. I mean, if, if we tell her we dropped the eggs off and it doesn't work out, well, such is the path of people who try to corrupt the essence of new gods. That's Such totally unbelievable. <laughs> to to make a few gods, sometimes you gotta break a few eggs. <laughs> I love it when Puck tries to be profound. Uh, very well. Okay, if so. it makes sense to break the eggs, let's just break the eggs. You're just gonna just gonna break these eggs, and but we're not going to cook them. These are like god potential eggs. They gotta taste great. I think out of all of us, <laughs> that should be your call, Puck. So if you want to go ahead and cook them up and eat them, I think I think that's on you. All right. <laughs> that way we can say we did deliver the eggs straight to my gullet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you you break up the eggs and you. You consume the spider eggs. Is is everybody? What? I'm not a philistine here. We cook them. They're eggs. I'm not. I'm not partaking of any of your spider eggs. I will go. Okay. Um, no, no. I'll help you prepare them. I'm sure halflings have a recipe for spider eggs. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Hannah. I don't want any though. They're they're all yours. Okay, so you uh, you cook up these spider eggs. They're spiderlicious, I guess, as yummy as you would imagine spider eggs to be. Uh, they uh, well, not dente, but otherwise good. They're they're, they're they're kind of gooey, crunchy. They're they're like, uh, uh, but they they also are kind of sweet tasting as well. They're like Kinder Surprise eggs, if the surprise is, but it's full of baby spider. So, so you consume these these eggs and then go merrily on your way. Uh, eventually, you arrive at the village of Lorn. Uh, the village of Lorn, you find it uh, largely deserted. Uh, the fields are untended. 
Uh, Mark, this is not how your character uh, heretic left the village of Lorne at all. Uh, but this is uh, this is uh, this place is was a bustling farming community and is now gone. The farmers are all gone. You can see some smoke rising from near the center of town, but that's about it. This is not right. Uh, I, I'm just going to start speeding towards the center of town where the smoke is rising from. Okay. Uh, you arrive outside the Red Dragon Inn. You're passing a load of stores and the stores... They, they, this, this place looks like it's been abandoned for, for maybe a couple of seasons. Uh, the, the, I mean, the crops of the field have been planted but haven't been, haven't been harvested. The crops in the field just, you know, stops rotting out in the field. Uh, the, uh, when, you, when you arrive at the center of town, you've passed by uh, stores that have been, uh, their doors have been left open, uh, leaves have blown into the stores. I mean, it's like the kind of podunk town general store, kind of farming implements and, and new boots sort of thing. Uh, you arrive at the center of town uh, to see that the tavern, however, is occupied. And uh, from uh, from the looks of things, from the lights on in the tavern, it looks like uh, it's occupied by quite a few people. All right, I'm going to um, approach quietly to try to see if I can determine if the people inside are the people of the town or some sort of invading force. Uh, these do not like look like the people of the town. These look like the uh, these look like clerics. Uh, there are quite a few of them here, and these clerics, these clerics, Catherine, these clerics are wearing the robes uh, of the uh, of the cult of the risen light. So they they are uh, they're the people that you stole stuff. Uh, there's there's quite a few of these of these clerics there in the tavern. Uh, so far, none of them have really noticed the party. Uh, you, you haven't really made any noise which would alert them to you. Um, can I make some sort of lore roll or lore roll or something to find out what that specific cult would want with the birth of a new god? Sure. Uh, you uh, you broke into their sanctum. So yeah, make me uh, intelligence plus. So your intelligence modify plus your level plus I broke into their sanctum. So yeah. That's uh. uh seven. Seven. Ah, and you rolled one. one. Hey, so there's not even any failing forwards on this. It's just a straight, straight whoopsie. Uh, so you have not, not only do you have no idea what these people are doing here, but as you as you kind of get closer to try and overhear what they're saying to give you any clue, uh, you step on a creaky floorboard because there's like a, a what do you call it? Like a veranda outside this tavern and you step on that and all conversation from inside the tavern ceases as you alert them to your presence so they uh, they they pause in what they're doing they they look out the front to where you are on the veranda and a couple of them start to walk you towards the veranda now you still have time to, to make yourself scarce if that's what you wish to do, so. Um, yeah, I, I step... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to ask how many stories is the tavern? Uh, it's how two stories. It? Okay, I would like to climb up the side of it, but everyone else can do their thing. <laughs> okay. Uh, you guys, thanks, you Anna. So... <laughs> oh, ow! <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Catherine, could I have from you a your dexterity modifier plus your level plus beef? Twenty. 
That's nine plus ten, nineteen. Nineteen? Okay. Uh, you find yourself a barrel, a rain barrel, by the side of the uh, uh, by the side of the tavern. You spring off the rain barrel and onto the roof. Uh, it wasn't wasn't super quiet. But what, speaking of the door coming open and the people talking inside, uh, you think that you probably evaded their detection. Uh, Brendan, what is Heretic doing to get out of the way? Is he getting out of the way? No. I, I stride forward and I'm like, where are the people of this town? Okay. Uh, you stride forward, uh, questing from them to know where are the people of this town? What have you what have you done with them kind of thing? Uh, they, yeah. uh, they frown at you. Uh, uh, they, they, they seem a little nonplussed. Uh, who, are, who are you? What are you doing here? I am the one who sees the world the way it actually is. I'm the one that people like you should fear. They call me heretic. What did you do with the people of this town? Uh, as you're speaking, uh, one of them who's standing behind uh, the others and is wearing a green robe and carrying a staff mocks you. He's like, I want to run. As you're speaking, <laughs> he, he is. He is insulting uh, you as as you speak. Uh, the the others are all. Uh, what, what do you mean? What uh, what did we do with the people of this town? The people of this town left when their crops failed, which you know to be a lie. You know that this is that this is not the truth. That they have uh, that they have you know. They planted crops and then they left before it was time for their crops to be harvested. If there were people around here to harvest their crops, things would have, yeah. you know, they would have harvested them. Yeah, yeah. Are any of them carrying any holy symbols or uh, religious artifacts? Yes, they are. They are indeed. Uh, and, you know, you, you can see that these religious artifacts they're carrying are, are kind of... Uh, how to put it? They are. One of them's carrying like, like symbol of the gods of lights, you know, generalized holy symbol. Another one is carrying a symbol of the gods of darkness. Another one is like, oh, he's got like a, a brooch representing a dwarven smith god, and he's got an amulet representing an elven god of death. And they just, just all labeled down, which is like every single sort of magical doodad related to the gods that they can get their hands on. So they're, they're not... You don't think these are worshippers of any specific gods, and it's the whole kind of... I'll have a crucifix and a star of David and a thing, because, hey, why not? Uh, so these these people are, are attempting to... You don't know what, but they've got a lot of holy symbols on them. Uh, I'd like to put an arrow into something breakable and, uh, and try to get okay. their attention. Uh, one of them is holding uh, is holding a tankard. Uh, the tankard is uh, is ceramic. So Perfect. yeah, if you want to put you want to put an arrow into that, okay. Uh, yeah, okay. Make me uh, so your character. Uh, let's see. Let me flip to your character here. No, you. So this would be a basic ranged attack. So it's D20 plus 6. All right, cool. Um, D20 plus 6. Awesome. I have a 10, so 16. 16. Okay. Uh, you, you unsheath your bow. Uh, your bow... Tanif. And uh, Tanif speaks to you. And she's all, Hello, I. Oh, Tanif. Would you, would you like me to kill everybody here? I can kill everybody here for you. Can I do a murder? Can I do a murder? So you're holding the bow and you shoot the, you shoot the tankard, and the tankard in his hand shatters, and the, the mood suddenly goes from, Who are you people? to, Why have you just shot an arrow at us? So I think uh, I think it's time to roll initiative. 
So we'll start. Uh, so your initiative. Uh, you'll see it on your character sheet. It's just below, uh, just beside of wisdom. So if you see wisdom, right, just to the right of that, it says initiative. So roll your initiative. That's a d20 roll. Uh huh. D20 roll. Sorry, I didn't say I didn't explain. It was a d20 roll. Yes, it's a d20 roll. <laughs> I go first. Yeah, of course. You go first up in the second story. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Catherine. Super I'm still trying to figure out why a bunch of clerks are here. <laughs> 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 okay, so uh, now that you've rolled your initiative, I'm going to start counting upwards from one. Let me know when I get to your initiative. So, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Wow, twenty-one. That'd be yes. me. Twenty-two. Okay, so. 21 for Mark. And, and uh, also for Buck. Okay. Uh, 22, 23. Yep. Okay, yeah, and Catherine, you really do go first. Awesome. And uh, these clerics, they're, they, they're actually after themselves. They're, they're kind of surprised about what just happened, and yeah, they, they started pulling out daggers and the like, but yeah, you you really surprised these people. <laughs> so let me see. I'm gonna share my screen with you, which is uh, let's see screen share. Okay, so we have here a tavern quickly sketched up in. There we go. So everybody should be able to see the tavern. Okay, you're up kind of on the roof. You shot an arrow at them. And we have we have some clerics who are standing by the door. And then let's make this over as well. Okay. So there was the one in back who was mocking everybody, and then the three came out the door. Okay, and Catherine, you're up first. So I'm gonna talk you through your halfling okay. rogue. Okay. Okay. Now halfling rogues, uh, they're two important things to know about uh, your rogue. Uh, your rogue has something called momentum. So whenever you make an attack and you hit with an attack, you gain momentum. Whenever you uh, get hit by an attack, you lose momentum. Uh, your powers roll with it and shortcut require you to have momentum. Uh, the other thing uh, that you uh, that you need to know about is shadow walk. Your character can disappear into the shadows and just just vanish for a round. When you come back you will uh, then get double damage from your attack. So, so what would you wish to do? So how this works is I just declare my attack and we resolve? Yep. Okay. I would like to... Are they all outside the tavern or just... Are they like half in the doorway? Uh, two of them are actually outside the tavern on the veranda. Uh, one of them in a doorway, in the doorway, and another one is just kind of standing behind the others. And he was the one who was, who was mocking your friends. Okay, so is there enough clearance between the guy in the doorway and the top of the doorway to swing in over him? Yes, there is. Okay, I would like yeah. to do that. Okay, okay. Uh, you swing in. 
ending up inside the tavern. Is that your intention? Yes, my intention is to end up inside the tavern and attack the guy in the green robes. Preferably just hit him in the face with my feet as I swing in. Okay, uh, in which case, make me a uh, basic melee attack. Uh, because you're hitting him with your feet rather than your uh, rather than a dagger or something like that, I'll say that if you hit, it's 2d6 plus 3 rather than 2d8 plus 3. Okay, so that's a plus 5 attack. So that's a 19. Huh. And okay, you hit. Okay, 2d6, 5 so, plus 3 is 8. Okay, 8 points of damage. Ow. You have knocked him onto its back. He is lying there, his nose is bleeding, he's, he's, he's really unhappy about that. You, you kind of roll to your feet. Don't okay, mock so the dwarf. He is my <laughs> friend. Talking of dwarves... It is time for Heretic. Thank you, Hannah. Um. Hmm. <laughs> so the they're all holding at this point like daggers, basically. They 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 pulled out daggers uh, when okay. when when you started acting a little bit chuff towards them, they started pulling out daggers. And then Mark just, just shot one of them. Graphium the eager was eager to fight. I was I was just trying to make sure if there was one of them that stood out as more threatening because he was holding like a giant hammer or sword or anything other than a dagger. Um, yeah, they're all kind of armed with wavy looking daggers. <laughs> Your classic wavy looking dagger. Um, great. So I will go ahead and uh, yeah, I'll try and bring one of them down, not killing him if possible, but like shooting. Uh, I do. I have my javelin of faith, right? So I want to use yes. that and shoot one of them in the leg. Okay. Okay. So your your intention is to bring these guys down rather than. Okay. So your javelin of faith. It's plus six. So d twenty plus six. Yep. And here's when the one comes out. Right, here we go. I was close. It's a five. So I have a total of an 11. Okay. So the good news is you do two points of damage to this one. He's You javelin have faithed him. You kind of got the door frame and some splinters of wood hit him. Uh, he yells out with a yelp of surprise. Next up, Pug the Pugnacious. Well, it turns out that I have a great axe with me. Who do? I'd like to, to introduce it to uh, one of the clerks here uh, violently. Okay. All right. Uh, so, uh, my basic melee attack is uh, plus six versus armor class. Uh huh. So, uh, d20 plus six. All right. Uh, that'll be a 12. That would be a 12. Okay, uh, that is a miss. You either do two points of miss damage. Yes. Or if you like, uh, you may use your building frenzy. Oh, yeah. Uh, once per day, once per battle, one battle per day. It's a free action after you've missed with an attack. Add 1d6 damage to your melee attacks until the end of the battle. This is the perfect time for that, especially since it's 8 o'clock. I will be doing that. Okay. You get super mad. So you add an extra d6. So I'll roll your... I'll roll, roll, roll about d6. Add Here comes a 1. Oh, it's a, it's a 4. So there we go. Ow. Okay. Now, it turns out that these guys are not so tough, not when compared to, uh, to a raging barbarian. And he goes down. That one there, he just, he just slumps. You, you get so mad, you miss him with your axe, and then you, you headbutt him, and he kind of goes back, and he slumps against the, against the outside of the tavern. So, next up, Mark... 
Let's see. So I have a power that says at the I have Elven Grace, the beginning of each of your turns, roll a die to see if you get an extra standard action. That's right. You need to roll it underneath the uh, underneath the escalation die value. The escalation die is currently zero. Oh, okay. Next round, you'll be able to start using Elven Grace. Cool. Uh, great. So I feel like killing these guys would be kind of terribly immoral. Um, and I don't think I have any punching uh, arrows in my in my bag, uh, <laughs> so I feel like I feel like I'd like to just wound one of them such that he would have trouble chasing us or fighting. Okay, so you're you're aiming for like their their feet, their legs, that sort of thing. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, that sounds okay. good. Okay. Um, so I have a plus seven because of my magic bow. You do, and now if you like, you could use a double ranged attack. So okay. what you do is you say ahead of time, I'm doing a double range attack. Uh, when, uh, should you hit, you would roll d6s for damage instead of d8s. Okay. And if the first attack is natural even, hit or miss, then you get to make a second attack. So the, when you mean even, you mean literally it's an even number on the die? It's an even number on the die. Yeah, cool, good, okay. Um, Brennan, Brennan loves Hawkeye. So uh, he's telling me to kill them with fingernails. No, that's right. It's Rich says kill them with their fingernails. But I'm not an immoral killer assassin, Brendan. I'm an elf. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> All right, let's see. Uh, so I'm a plus seven. I'm doing D6s instead of mm-hmm. D8s for damage. Let's roll. That is a four. I think that's probably a miss. That's a miss. You, you do two points of missed damage. Uh, that, that one who earlier um, got Javel under faith, got some splinters, exploded near him. Uh, he your, your arrow surprises him. He staggers backwards and hits his shoulder against the door frame. Uh, but that's a natural even roll, so you get to make a second attack. All right, I'm going to try to uh, finish that guy off. Uh, second one is a, is a three, so it's a total of ten. <laughs> Okay. Uh, was was your same one against against that one or uh, yeah, same, same, same guy? guy same guy. guy. Same guy. Okay. Uh, and as he staggers backwards, he he hits his head slightly. So it's uh, it's this one here in the doorway. He kind of staggers back indoors, and he he's bruised from this. Uh, but no, nobody's actually hit him. He's just you know shaken up and bruised. Okay, so uh, next person to act. Oh, them. Okay, uh, this one kind of just lays there. He's just been headbutted by a half orc. He's not feeling too well at all. Uh, this one gets to his feet, and he's going to attempt to uh, do something called disengaging. Uh, now, disengaging means you roll a d20. If you roll 11 plus. Then you successfully moved away from whoever it is that's attacking you. You rolled less than 11, then you can't really move away from them. You're, you're kind of dodging their blows, can't really get away. So. Okay, he successfully disengages with a roll of 18. And he, he runs over here, hides behind the barrels, and is beginning to cast a spell. Uh, this one it lies there. This one, I guess he needs to disengage from you too. Uh, so let's see what that is. Uh, do do Roll, roll. How do I? Wait, how do I? I'm hitting roll. Do I have to hit clear? You need to tick up your dice uh, to have a number two. What dice? Number two. Ah, right. Roll. Okay. That's the problem. Nine. Fails to disengage. And the other one is he's going he's gonna to attempt to charge towards the person with the bow who's shooting it out a ton of arrows all of a sudden. Now, Mark, the person charging towards you has a murderous look in his eyes. Richard, do you want uh, do you want Pug the Pugnacious to step in the way there? Of course. Okay, so Pug the Pugnacious 
intercepts that movement. Okay, they're now going to attack. So, the one who is... Uh, the one who is attempting to... He's got his, he's got his knife out. He's attempting to ta attack Pug Pugnacious. And he rolls a... Wait, wait, for No, no, he does not hit Pug the Pugnacious. Uh, the one who is next to... Uh, the one who is next to Hannah... Fails to hit Hannah... The one casting the spell. Huh. Okay, he casts it on... He's going to cast it on Pugnacious 2. Oh! Okay, so... Does... Does a 20 hit Pugnacious's PD, his physical defense? Play champions now? I have a 16 in PD. <laughs> PD. My so, ED, however, uh, is not even on the page. <laughs> I can see speed. The hell. So characters in 30 have uh, armor class. There's physical defense, which is defending against stuff like spells or things which, which having armor wouldn't really help. And mental defense, which is somebody's trying to source the mind or you've seen something that's scary. So it's like so, savings throws, but uh, armor class. Okay. Yeah. So it targets it targets back rather than targeting your. Um, yeah. So rather than you rolling save, it tries to target your physical defense or mental defense or armor class. So that is uh, six points of damage, and you are feeling rather unwell. You, you, you start to start. Well, I just ate some spider breath, so I'm okay with that. <laughs> okay, that is the end of their turn. Uh, the escalation die goes up to. Uh, let me see. One. So the way that the escalation die works is uh, all heroes now get plus one. Their attack rolls. Uh, this doesn't count the villains, just player characters. Uh, some monsters do take advantage of the escalation die. Monsters like dragons get to use the escalation die. But there are no dragons here. So, first person to act, Catherine, Han of Randlebright, has okay. has just had the person scramble to his feet and he's, he's run away here behind the barrels. Uh, this one has, has got to his feet and uh, her didn't really do anything. He tried to slash at you with a dagger, but eh. uh, but this one this one is, is definitely a wizard of some sort. All right, I would like to shadow walk. Okay, so his uh, his mental defense is twelve. So I have a so, plus five. Uh huh. Yes. Succeed, and I just vanish into the nearby shadows. You do, you do indeed. And, and I'm uh, out. Yep. You're away. Nobody knows where you are. You you stepped into the shadows and, and you're gone. Like Kaiser Soze. Like somebody else who's good at disappearing in the shadows. Okay, so <laughs> next person do it. Uh, <laughs> uh Brendan. Uh Brendan. Uh this this person is throwing around spells and you can see you can see that uh but Puck is, is now now having some trouble and it appears that his breakfast is trying to escape. Yeah. So um, what, do you, what do you wish to do? I'm going to hurl another javelin of faith the one who's chucking the spells. Okay. Okay, you cast javelin of faith. So you kind of get round here to, to kind of cast it through there, like through the doorway and try and Yep, that sounds good to me. Okay. Okay, road hit is plus six versus PD. Ah, Fifteen. Fifteen total, sorry. Nine plus six. Okay, you hit. 1d6 plus four holy damage. Yes. Damn. <laughs> That's only five. It's 
only five. Okay. He collapses. This guy was not so tough. Uh, next person to act is Richard. Puck the Pugnacious. Yeah, well, uh, you know, I've got a guy right up in front of me, and I figure I'm going to have to go through him to get to the dude who made me sick anyway, so I'll get on that with chopping. Okay. And, uh, oh, I may have missed again, which is delicious because of my wonderful <laughs> engagement and frenzy. Uh, I have rolled a nine. Uh, so remember you have plus one? Oh, so I've rolled a nine, I've rolled a three, I get plus seven because of the escalation die, so it's a ten. Uh-huh. Total, of, oh, okay, I thought you said you had nine on the die. Okay, right. You miss. So awesome. You know, that means I get an two, additional D6. Six damage. Mm-hmm. I've, I'm going to start attacking with as many halberds and other unwieldy weapons as possible. <laughs> Okay, uh, so uh, seven two, plus six, two get, damage. That's nine. So you're, you're just frothing at the mouth, and how much damage do you do there? Nine. Nine. Okay, so in your frenzy, you you pick this one up and you throw him through the door, uh, and that's actually a because these guys are mooks. You deal enough damage to one mook, it carries over to the next mook nearby. So you just picked up one of them and hurled him at the other, knocking them both out cold. And then at the end of your turn, you begin to vomit. Why are you selecting all the spiders? Hold on a second. I ate them. Dead. You did. That mean, yeah, that means that they can't come back, right? That's the rule. If I eat it, it's it's gone forever. <laughs> hey guys, uh, good news is we actually didn't lie to the crone. <laughs> Bad news deliver. is we killed the spiders. It did deliver. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. this, one is still con- <laughs> this one is still vaguely conscious, but he's he's really woozy. These these guys are out cold. And you're you're not. Even, the one that you picked up and physically hurled at another human being, you're not even sure what, what's going to go on there. Okay, so next person to act, Mark. Your friend has just vomited up a load of spiders. And these spiders are big, and seeing these come out of his body, that was, that was something that's going to live with you for a long time. He's, that, was not, that was not normal. I've seen orcs do a lot of crazy shit, but <laughs> that was that was intense. What what about that large spider? That didn't come out of uh, Pug, did it? Oh yeah, that climbed out of him one leg at a time. How how large is it? It's kind of uh, that big. Yeah. This okay. is not a well, natural uh, event, but has occurred. Okay. I will uh I will uh I'm gonna ignore these lesser spiders because I think Puck will will handle them. I'm gonna focus on the big spider. And uh, I'm gonna okay. roll I guess I'll start by rolling my extra attack, Elven Grace. Uh, oh, Elven Grace, yep. So the escalation die is one, so one or less. So I missed the first time, but I get to re roll because of my magic bow. And mm-hmm. the second time it is a six. No. Nope. Nope. Uh, so I will. I will go ahead and. Sorry, I'll go ahead and attack the uh, the large spider. Okay, because you missed with this, uh, uh, with your second reroll, uh, oh, your okay. your bow Tanif gets to uh, gets to do something before you act. So let me see. Tanif is going to. Oh hey, I see. Right. Hey! Hey! What shoot stuff? What kill stuff? Let's do a murder! And uh, Tanif, Tanif shoots 
uh, at uh, a heretic. So, uh, so let's see. Mm. <laughs> we are killing this goddamn bow. <laughs> okay. Uh, does a twenty-one hit your AC? If I say no, will you believe me? Bearing in mind, I do have PBFs. <laughs> Uh, I, think it hits. I think it hits. It hits your AC. Uh, okay, uh, six points of damage. Ouch. Okay, and Mark, your your turn. Your your bow has gonna... rested itself temporarily from your from your grasp, but kind of turned your body, and you shot point blank at Heretic, and he's now got an arrow stuck out of his shoulder. I'm gonna make a face like I don't know, and then. Turn to the turn, to turn back to the spider. Uh, I'll do a double ranged attack. Double ranged attack. The plus seven. Uh, Eleven with the escalation die. Yeah. Okay. So the first one is a miss, but was that an even miss? No, it wasn't. Oh. Okay. So uh, on the giant spider. Two points of damage. Okay, uh, next person to act. Top of a round, and escalation die goes to two. And you come back wherever you like. Gaffrey, uh, where, where are you stepping out of the shadows? On top of the spider. Okay, you're now... You're now well, actually on top of the spider... Uh, if Can that's possible, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, okay. Yes. So, so Tanif somehow made her way onto the roof of this building and now leaps off onto the back of the spider. Yeah. Yep, dang. Yeah, and I'd like to use Sure Cut because I have momentum from kicking that guy in the face. You do? Hmm? Okay, so... Okay, so that's a plus uh, five. Fourteen. Okay, so uh, fourteen versus armor class. Uh, it's armor yep. class. Yes. Yes. Okay, it's armor class is seventeen. I, okay. I'm willing to make a deal here. I'll let you hit if you somehow inconvenience one of your friends. I maybe, would love to maybe, do that. Maybe a gout of blood hits. Who's, who's, uh, I guess. Yeah. Okay, puck. Sure. Gets hit in the face by a bout of by a gout of blood. On Puck's turn, you'll have minus two to hit. Okay, awesome. so you have you have struck with uh, with shortcut, so it's two d eight plus three. And, and it's it's a double. Yep. Uh huh. So it's like twenty six. Twenty six. Ow. Okay, it uh, you have you have found like the, the, the bit between its its thorax and its its front half, uh, its its head, body, spider thing, and have driven your your blade deep into that. It of course spurts out and hits Puck in the face. Uh, next person to act, uh, Brendan. You've just taken an arrow to the shoulder from one of your closest friends. Yeah, what the hell? <laughs> um, what's, what's even worse is is you heard him giggling in, in a kind of girlish way whilst he did this, which was very disconcerting. <laughs> if there was not a giant spider, we would be having a discussion <laughs> about this. Oh dear. Yeah, that's terrifying. Okay. Um let's see. I'm trying to think like Manchavelin of Faith is really useful because it's against physical defense. Uh is my hammer face spell, would that basically take my entire turn? That will take your entire turn, but it means for all your melee attacks then uh awesome from then on. Yeah. But I only get plus four versus AC on 
I would also like to point out your character has some cool stuff. So you have cleric powers. Mm, so if you go point. on the bottom right hand corner, uh, you can use uh, talent, whatever you like. So you have uh, you have invocation of justice. Uh, so uh, for, for the rest of a battle, all of your allies do plus four miss damage. Or you have invocation of protection, where you can go, ah, this battle, critical hits against us don't really count. Or invocation of leadership, where you can go, huh, the escalation die, I'm just going to put that up to three. You also have uh, shield of faith and bless, which are quick actions. So if you like, you could do hammer of faith and shield of faith and bless. Or shield of faith or bless. Or yeah, let's. So you've got two quick actions. I'll do that. I'll do. I'll do hammer of faith. Um, okay. And I'll. Uh, I'll go ahead and. I kind of want you to start hitting people, Puck. So I'll bless Puck. Okay. So Puck gains a plus two attack bonus for the rest of the battle. That works against my plan. Just to keep missing until you're dealing enormous sums of damage. Yes, now I only get to do 2d8. You always do the plus 2d6, don't you? No, it's only yeah, when I'm always, for the 2D, rest of the battle. Sorry, 2d10, I'll take it. All right, if I hit, I'll do 2d10. And, and the 2d6, if for the 2D10, rest of the battle. 2d10 plus 2d6, because you've missed twice. That, that, that just keeps building through the battle. Ooh. To melee attacks. Wow, that's insane. And I'd, I'd also point out your character can rage as well, if you'd like to. I don't know. I kind of like this food. I think there's a second attempt here. So, so raging means that uh, you can rage once a day. Sometimes more than once a day. It has a recharge on it. And when you're raging, you roll 2d20s, and you take the better one. Uh, if you roll an 11 plus with both of them, then and, and it's a hit, then it's a crit. That's insane. So when your turn comes up, just let you know. Okay, so so Brendan, uh, that was bless. That was hammer of faith. You also have a, another quick action or a move you can use. So if you want, you can move away from these spiders, or you could use uh, shield of faith, or you could use uh, one of your invocations there. Yeah, I'll actually I'll go ahead and I'll cast uh, Shield of Faith if I can on Hannah. Okay, so Hannah, you now have plus two to your uh, armor class for the rest of the battle. Okay, so Richard is next. So, Richard, you have minus two to hit because you got splatted with spider ichor in the eyes, but plus two because you've just been blessed by your friend who doesn't believe in the gods. Great. So, you're up. Uh, so, I'm surrounded by spiders. Yes. Would you like to rage? I am. I'll, I'll um... let you guys know that this might be the, the one combat we have, so you might as well use rage. Hmm. Are the small spiders mook considered mooks? Uh, I don't believe any of these are mooks. Uh, let me just double check on that. Spiders. Oh, okay. I will let you know ahead of time that these smallest spiders are mooks, and they have five hit points each. Uh -huh. I uh, I would like to use my barbaric cleave, stomping these spiders that I've eaten already, and not doing anything effective to the giant monsters, so other player characters can kill that. So, uh, okay, yeah, it's a free so, action. I can make another barbarian melee yeah. attack after I've dropped a non mook a non mook foe. As your oh crap, I misread it. A lot of words. Okay. All right, I'll rage. Okay, so you're raging. Okay. Yes. So, you're raging. Roll two d twenties for attacking. Okay, 
Neither of those are a natural 11 plus. Um, but uh, I have the escalation die of plus two, so I've rolled 18 with the best of the two. Uh, 18, uh, you you hit, roll your damage. So it's 2d10 plus four plus 2d6 because of your building frenzy. Goodness gracious. Uh, that would be a 27, 31. 31 points of damage? Yes. Okay, that's enough to kill all five of these spiders. Please describe to me how your raging, raging, frenzying barbarian kills five spiders. Uh, well, I, I think there's a couple of axe hits that split them in twain. Uh, then there's a flat of the blade that sends one flying over. Luckily, heretic, you're short. So over your head. <laughs> um, and then I actually I, I stomp one um, because that's yeah. one. that's awesome stomp okay. a big and big boot you've dropped the last mook in a mob do you want to cleave and just move up to this one what uh, that Can sounds great I would like to cleave okay cleave uh, let's see do I just do normal damage or I'm a little confused by cleave. Okay, so it's 2d20s to attack. Oh, I just get a whole other attack. That's a 19, but the other one's just a 1, so I'm, I'm rather sure I hit with that one. Full damage? Okay. You hit. You hit. So uh, 2d10 plus 2d6 plus 4. Uh, that would be uh, 22. 22. 22. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. So what I, had to, what I do at this point is I bring the axe down and I slice four of its, uh, its legs off. Then I, yeah, I, I need to, then I, I, I flip the axe up and toss it up in the air and then just swat at it and slam it into the wall. Like a baseball. Because I like baseball. Okay, it's now missing some legs. Wait. Twenty-two and it's still good. Dang. Yep, Tough. it's twenty-two and it's still good. It's it's on its last legs. Literally, you've just cut a load <laughs> of its legs off, but still good. Okay, next person to act, Mark. Yeah, I will. Uh, I'm gonna kill the large spider, and I have once per battle as a free action. Choose an enemy. The crit range of your attacks against that enemy expands by two for the rest of the battle. So I'll I'll assign that to the large. Spider. Yeah, and uh, I'll start by rolling to see if I get an extra action. With escalation dies at two now. Uh huh. Ha two, so I get an extra action, right? Okay. Yes, you do. Okay, and I will. Uh, plus on your dice hits uh, does crit. Great, cool. So I will. Uh, I'm going to do the double attack, and uh, we'll start with first roll. It's an eighteen plus. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. So next one. Because that's natural even, you get to make a second attack. Cool. I will roll, and that's a nine. So with my bonus, it's a total of 18. 18? Yep. Uh, that's 16. Is a hit. Okay. And for your next action, we'll, we'll deal with the damage from this. Cool. In I'll, just, I'll, I'll do the same thing. I'm just going to keep attacking it. Okay. That's a 14, so 21. Sorry, 23 with the other effect. That and hits. I'll roll again. That's a 19, so it's another crit. Okay. <laughs> right. So that's two crits and two so, hits. Crits and two hits. So you're going full le- full Legolas on this guy. Uh, yeah. So it's uh, the range attack. It is the Ranger. 2d6 uh, plus, plus 3. Plus three. And that is... Yep. So I'll just roll uh, 8d6 plus uh, plus 12. 10, 15, 18, 21, 27, uh, 34, 46 points of damage. 46, and two of those were a crit, so a crit doubles those two ones, so let me see. 
So what was it, 46? Yeah, so like plus an extra 15, so like 61. Okay. Uh, you kill it. You kill it dead. You kill it with arrows so much, just pin cushioning it. Uh, the spider drops out from beneath your friend, uh, just dying in a appropriately gruesome way. You 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 poke out its eyes, all eight of them, with arrows. <laughs> oh, just cruel. <laughs> okay. So, top of a round, uh, Catherine, I understand that you might have to leave us soon, so yeah. what would you wish to do? Uh, well, first, uncover Lift myself from all the wonderful spider ichor that our elf friend so kindly dropped me into. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to go search that guy in the green robes, and probably everyone else, and see if, okay. one, there's anything valuable, and two, they have any sort of halfling holy symbols, and I'll let you guys stop the cult. Have fun. Okay. So you're, you're kind of creeping off to search this guy in the green robes, and you sneak in through the back there. And, uh, yeah, you, you find a large purse of money and sneak off to do something else. Yep. Okay. Hey, uh, thank you Leaving for running the rest this game. of the party with this fight. I've, I've enjoyed having you. Uh, we will Thanks. probably finish up in the next, uh, next quarter hour anyway. Okay. Yeah, well, it was good playing with everyone. Thank okay. you. Thank also, you for being here. Thanks for playing with us, Catherine. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Sure. Bye. Okay. Uh, next up is right. Uh, next up is Brendan. You've now hammered and faithed yourself well up. Hmm. And, and we have two little spiders are left. Uh huh. It looks like. I think they're tough spiders. Um, let's just go and smash them into itty bitty pieces and gunk and gooeyness. Okay. Well, I've just realized these spiders haven't actually acted this whole combat. They, they haven't actually done anything. Okay. Uh, they were odd. Yeah, they, they, they were recovering from. A, do, you, do you want to smash the one that's only got a couple of legs left, or this one who, who looks like he's ready to take on the party? Uh, I'll smash the one that's more ready, the one that's not hurt yet. Okay. The hunting spider. Mother humper. So that's a seven. Okay. Total. Total. Well, that's that's a miss. Uh, you yep. do two points of damage to it just through just through swinging your hammer good and hard. You you hit it, but it's a glancing. Uh, next up, oh, do you wish to use? Hold on, use your computer tool. Okay. Uh, next up is Richard. I think we've got what two small spiders left. Yes. Uh huh. So I will attempt to. It's going to be difficult to justify killing two of them because they're not that close, but I'll, I'll kill the one that's closest to me. Okay. Okay, basically the attack, you roll 2d20s for your yep. attack. Uh, it's unfortunately a 10 and an 8, but I think the 10 would hit with the plus 9 that I have to hit right now. Is the blood still affecting yes, me? That does hit. No, the blood's not affecting you. Okay, so then it's, a, it's actually oh, one round. Okay. Yes, it hits. Uh, roll your damage. So two d eight. Uh, sorry, two d ten. Yep. Plus two d six plus twenty five. Twenty five. Okay. This Sounded one really one awesome before is... the sixty one. Now it's kind of like jump change. <laughs> That's like the cover to get in the door. Dead. Well, to, to be fair, Mark did get. Did get two crits. Um, no, it's, so you don't it, have to sway my feelings. Mark is a better fighter than I am. <laughs> because his character is in 61. Yeah. I don't know what the range it does. It's, uh, the range is very good. Okay, uh, next up is Mark. Uh, there's only the one spider left, right? Yep. 
Yeah, I shoot it with a bow. And okay. I will use my double attack. Try not to hit me. Do you want to roll your... Uh, do you want to roll to see whether you get you your extra action? Oh, I should. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it has to go up to a D8 oh. now because I got my extra action. Uh, I do so not. D8, three or less. And I'm not oh. going to re-roll it because I don't want Tana to take control. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, I got a, like, 22. 22 hits? Was that yeah. a natural cool. Yes, it is. So I'll round the second one. And the second one's a 20, so it's a crit. Okay, that's a crit. Okay. So, uh, roll your damage. Uh, uh, seven. And then double the damage from the crit. So 14 plus then the other one would be... 20 plus 3, 9, 29? You kill the remaining spider. Man, these spiders didn't actually get to do anything. Okay. Uh, the remaining spider dies. Uh, on the edge of town, you could hear a rumbling sound. Uh, look Look to the horizon. Uh, there's a light coming from uh, the edge of town. A uh, shaft of light rising up into the sky. Uh, the clouds are being illuminated by this shaft of light. I look towards, uh, I look towards uh, uh, the heretic as if to say... It could just be a manifestation of the world's will. It doesn't have to be a god. Goodness gracious. And I just start walking towards the light. <laughs> okay. So you begin walking towards the light. Uh, as you walk towards it, you see that there are a lot of, of dead priests of various faith. Uh, yeah. Just lying around in, in back alleys, kind of like half out windows. You missed them on your way into town because you were coming from the opposite direction. Uh, but it looks like they, they mutually killed each other. Um, the, the, the few that you, you encountered from the uh, from the Risen Light cult, but they were they were the survivors. They were the ones who managed to avoid getting slaughtered by everybody else. Uh, at the edge of town, you see this large pit with, with dust and various bits of detritus being sucked into it by this, this total gravity as as light just shoots up towards the sky. And we can't see what's inside the pit. We just see, like, stuff getting pulled in as light is shooting up out of it. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like a craterish pit uh, around about 10 feet across. Richard, Pug the Pugnacious, knows about this, perhaps. Uh, make me an... Mm, Let's see. Pacta Pugnacious. Uh, wisdom, plus your level, plus art, museum, and high culture. So, D20 plus 7. It'll be a 15. Okay. That's, that's just enough. Okay, you have seen this before in painting and in sculpture. So this is this is the, the cradle of a god, and you, you've seen this like in in paintings and, and heard about it in poetry. It's fairly obscure, but now now that you're actually seeing this, you're like, oh yeah, okay. And now it suddenly becomes clear why Mabel the crone wanted you to uh, to bring spiders here. If she could have got a spider into this crater, the spider would have would have achieved apotheosis, would have become a god. Uh, now the question is, Mark, your your magic item, uh, Tanif, uh, the quirk there is that you, you desire apotheosis, but you're like, yeah, it would be nice to be a god. Uh, and uh, and Brendan, are, are you gonna let are you gonna let people go and become gods? What's what's no, doing? No, no. So so Richard, does Puck the Pugnacious share this knowledge with the rest of the party? Don't ask me how I know this, but that's the cradle of the gods. We could probably birth a god right now. 
I, I kind of all I do is sort of arch my eyebrows, sort of Spock style. Mm. That seems unwise. I vote no. It's just here. It's gonna birth something at some time. We might as well choose it. We can birth. Yeah, I mean, the... a house cat might wander along and fall into it. Or... Well, does, uh, does, a house does cat it... can wander along. Does the birthing go on forever? How how true is that of anything in nature? That forever will it continue to have this this thing, and we must defend it for the rest we of. We don't it. really have time for this, heretic. You can have this conversation with people who like talk to Hannah. She cares about that stuff. Oh God! Right uh, now we've I... got a cradle. We need to get away in a manger or something. Take care of this. Can we break it? It would probably be bad, I would think. Yeah, I mean, if you like, kind of hit it with a hammer, will you then end up with a god of hammers? I mean, not quite certain how this works. No living person has seen one. It's just like a rumor, a legend. You know, we could really use another god or a goddess of love. Anybody got any love in their heart? I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> I kind of want to go touch it and become the god of no gods, but that's me. Yeah, you should do that. You should you should just be like there's no there's nothing to fear here, there are no gods. Um, just yeah. like uh, This is just the world, and it is the world outpouring its own essence and looking for a vessel to hold it. And if we can just give it back into the world, there's nothing special or weird going on here. <laughs> okay, so you're you're gonna just step into the light and just like, hey guys. Yeah. This is a horrible... I'm just going on record. This is a horrible <laughs> idea. Okay. Heretic steps into the light. Uh, so uh, so Brendan Heretic's body uh, is atomized, it dissolves, uh, and your, your your soul rises up filled with light as, as many mortals before you have been empowered by the world uh, as gods. And you, you rise up into the, into the overworld where you look down and, and take your place in the heavens as god of atheists. Whether <laughs> somebody somewhere is not worshipping, they're worshipping you. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, that is messed up. Your, your, your friends have just kind of stood there as, as the light fades and they're just like, well, that was a thing. <laughs> So, uh, so what happens to uh, so Mark? What what happens to Tanif and uh, Braffy and the Eager? What, what, where where probably, do they head to next? I think we probably uh, go back to to wandering, uh, like we do, uh, you know, solving crimes and fixing problems, and <laughs> without, without really doing much of either. And uh, and Richard. Uh, what, what happens with Pug the Pugnacious? What's his coda to this story? What, what what happens to him next? Well, after he watched an atheism god born, it really kind of sucked the marrow out of life, so he just went back to gladiating. Or gladiatorialation. Okay. He, he returns to the Imperial City of Axis and takes up uh, takes up arms as a gladiator again. Now the question is, uh, do, you, do you worship Heretic? No, I... Slept beside the guy. He snores. He's not really godish. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. So, so heretic's first worshiper is uh, is Puck the Pugnacious by his yeah. refusal to worship you. <laughs> become, yeah. Become I get you either way. High priest. Puck the Pugnacious goes around telling people that you you're not a god. Thus, thus yeah. increasing power. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, that's good. Uh, okay, so I think that that brings us to to the end. Now, obviously, with uh, uh, with a, a regular game, there would be uh, there, there would be further sessions. We'd have like the third day of the week. We wouldn't usually end session one with somebody ascending to godhood, but but uh, it's you know. It was a, right. it was it was a, it was a fun end way to end a one shot game. Uh, so if it's one ongoing game. 
uh, there would be a uh, something called an incremental advance. So 13th Age doesn't use experience points or anything similar to that. Instead, if you look at the bottom corner of your character sheet, you'll see something called an incremental advance. So after every session where you where you succeed, you you move forwards in your quest, you, you you do whatever it was that you set out to do, or move towards that goal, you would get an incremental bug. So you might get uh, extra skills or extra hit points. And it's it's a feature of the next level that you get ahead of time. You go, oh, I'm going to get my third level spells, or I'm going to get hit points as though I was third level, or I'm going to get I'm going to get a spell or an uh, extra magic item as though I was third level. And that cool. way you... Uh, Everybody advances incrementally, and then when the GM decides that it's time for everybody to level up, which is generally every between four to eight games, but sometimes it's appropriate to do it after one game, everybody levels up simultaneously to the next level. So it's it's a neat well, way to handle handle character growth, and it means that if somebody misses a couple of sessions, they'll miss their incremental advances, but everybody levels up simultaneously. So never, nobody's ever like... Cool two or three levels behind. Everybody's the same level. Well, uh, Mark has to head out, so we need to close up here. So I'd just like to say uh, thank you very much for running Ash. Thank you very much for playing Mark and Rich. Hi. Thank you for playing Catherine. Really yeah, it was great fun. Um, and have a good night, everybody. Thanks for watching. Thanks, bye. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.